Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about the Good Samaritan by Jacopo di Bassano. Out of the so many paintings of the Good Samaritan, why this one? I have a special reason, but what is it? And here it is, the cool hairstyle. Like it? But seriously, I have chosen this one because Jacopo has many surprises for us. Let's look at the parable first. Let's look first at the introduction to the parable. That's important. Look at it. It's a lawyer. He's testing Jesus. What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? I think it would the better translation would be the fullness of life. Then Jesus says two things, love God and love neighbor. And then the lawyer asks the further question, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus tells the story. This context is important. And now Jesus begins to tell the story about the man was coming down from Jerusalem, down in the valley of Jericho, when he was attacked, beaten, and left there on the side of the road. Now, two more characters come onto the scene. There they are in the painting. The priest and the Levi. Both of their roles is to work within the temple. They are doing God's work. Do you remember? Love God and love neighbor. They are doing God's love. But they also know the law. They know that if this man is bleeding and they should come in contact with the blood, they would become unclean and they would have to go through a period of purification before they could go back to the temple. So they do not stop. In fact, the priest even crosses on the other side of the road. And now it's time for us to look at the two main characters of the story. Here they are. The man better than bruised, who could stand for anybody. He's unnamed. Anybody that society has rejected, or thrown away, and the second is the Samaritan. He is also despised by the rest of the Orthodox Jews. And can you see how revolutionary it is then for Jesus to make him the hero of the story? But there are two surprises that Jacopo di Bassano gives us. The first is, look at the intimacy between the two characters. The person better than Bruce leans on the rich, but the rich person, the Samaritan, leans on the poor person. It is literally the Jacopo di Bassano saying to me that the poor need the rich in order to be able to lift them up and raise them up. But the rich also need the poor, otherwise we become self-centered, materialistic and greedy. But there is a second surprise. Look at the way Jacopo di Bassano painted the two of them. Doesn't the way that he's painted them remind you of another moment in the story in the Gospels? Look at it. Doesn't that remind you very much of Mary with Christ in her arms at the foot of the cross? This is exactly what Jacopo is saying to me. He's saying that whenever we help, we reach out for a person who is better than bruised, who needs us, we are holding Christ in our arms. Then the story goes on to literally list all the positive actions that the Samaritan does for the person who is better than bruised. He pours oil, wine, he lifts him up, puts him on his donkey, he takes him to an inn, he pays, and then he pays even more. Why this long list of things? The Samaritan stops, but not to tell the poor man that he remember him during the prayer of the faithful next Sunday. He stops and does practical, concrete things. He pours oil, wine, on the wounds of the poor man. Oil and wine are expensive and necessary for life. It is Jesus trying to tell us that we do not give our left over to the poor, that our generosity has to be abundant and even extravagant. And by the way, should you meet me somewhere better than Bruce and left on the side of the road, 
pour the oil on my wounds, but give me the wine to drink, I recover much faster. In his paintings, Jacopo includes animals. Firstly, the donkey. But then he includes also two dogs. Why the two dogs? Because the dog in Renaissance art is the symbol of loyalty and fidelity. That's why very often when they paint a couple, they put a dog at their feet to symbolize that this couple is loyal and faithful to each other. But why two dogs? Remember the introduction? For the fullness of love, we need two things and they are inseparable. Love God and love neighbor. In other words, if we truly love God, we must also love our neighbor. And if we love our neighbor, it is a practical and concrete way to show that we also love God. We had double faithfulness and double loyalty. That's why in the letter of John, he actually says that if you say that you love God but hate your neighbor, you are a liar. But Jacopo has more surprises for us. Look behind the shoulders of the Good Samaritan. There is a town there. Do you remember the story talked about Jerusalem and Jericho? But Jacopo doesn't pay either Jerusalem or Jericho. Jacopo di Bassano means Jacopo who comes from the city of Bassano. And so what does he do? He paints his own city in the background. And there it is, the city of Bassano in the 16th century. Can you see the 45 walls there? Can you see the river? It looks more like the River Yara on a good day. And behind, overlooking it all, is the famous Mount Grappa. What is Jacopo telling us? That for him, the story of the Good Samaritan is not a 1500 years old story. For him, it is a story that must become alive and active where? In his own city. And he's telling us, the viewers, that this story must become alive and active where? In our families, in our schools, in our parishes, in our workplace. But Jacopo has not finished surprising us. Look at this painting. Look at the whole composition. Can you see it? Can you see it? One side there is light, on the other side there is darkness. And right down the middle between the light and the darkness, on the fault line between the light and the darkness, is the body of the person who is better than bruised, the poor. What is he saying to us? He's saying that we should not judge ourselves by the number of times we go to church. We should not judge our parishes by the number of people that come to church on a Sunday. We should not judge our schools by the excellent results that we get in year 12. We should not judge our society by the wealth that we have, but we should judge ourselves and our society by the way that we look after the poor. Because if we do not look after the poor, we still live in the dark. Only by looking after the poor, we begin then to start walking in the light. And now in conclusion, what is Jacopo and what is the story telling us? It's very simple. Jacopo is telling us that these two guys are not the heroes of the story. This is the hero of the story and we want to be like him. That's why Jesus ends the whole story with a direct command to the lawyer. Go and do likewise. Thank you, Jacopo, for this challenging reminder. Next week, I have been asked, could you please do a Caravaggio? So, this is the one that I will do. The conversion on the way to Damascus. Thank you. Bye now.